Hello and welcome to Ask the Experts, the show where you can connect directly with the experts to get your questions answered live. So make sure you get as many of your questions into the chat and we'll get to as many as we can. Good morning, good afternoon, good day. My name is Treb Gott and I'm a Power BI MVP and I'm excited to be your host today. Today we're gonna to be talking about empowering your organization with the Power Platform. With me, I have some co-hosts that I'll allow them to introduce themselves. Uh, so Gaston, gonna go ahead first. Yep. Uh, hello. Uh, my name is Gaston Gross, uh, working as a senior principal within a slalom uh, company here in the uh, in Bellevue. Um, I'm from Uruguay, South America, also a Microsoft MVP in data platform. I'm happy to be here. Let's go with uh, Charles. Hey, Gaston. Thank you very much. And my name is Charles Sterling. I used to work on the Power BI team with these amazing MVPs, uh, Gaston and Treb. Now I'm on the Power Apps team where I get to work with people like Kent Weir on the Power Cat team. So Kent, I think that's a great handoff to you. <laughs> Thank you for that. So hi everyone, my name is Kent Weir. I'm a lead on the Power Cat team uh, here at Microsoft where I'm focused on both uh, Power Automate's RPA and then also Power Virtual Agents. It's uh, great to be here. Uh, great guy. I'm with great company here. And finally, my name is Trev God. Again, I mentioned I'm Power BI MVP, uh, also based here in Bellevue, Washington. So I'm with a company called Marquee Insights. Uh, we have questions already, so this is awesome. And I'm guessing, Kent, this might be yours, where we're going to talk about uh, process mining. And then after that, we're going to talk about our favorite updates from, uh, from Ignite. So Kent, you want to go ahead and take the first question here? Yeah, sure. So the question is, uh, can you please explain what process mining is and how it extends RPA? And so this is a is a great question. Uh, so we do oftentimes see process mining being related with RPA. And naturally, when we think about RPA, it's a very business focused, um, you know, initiative. It's it's automation that drives tangible business outcomes. Now, when we think about organizations that have these automation needs, they're typically related to like large processes that require a lot of um, investigation or analysis in order to drive the right outcome. You know, saying I have is that if you automate a bad process, all you're gonna do is make a bigger mess faster. And so as a result, you really wanna make sure that what you're automating is a bright value, but you've also leaned out the process as well. And so inside of Process Insights, it used to be called Process Advisor. Um, it's part of the Power Platform. It allows people to take advantage of the RPA recording technologies found in Power Automate Desktop in order to identify deficiencies within a business process that you went, want to automate from that perspective. So we're gonna allow you and your colleagues to go ahead, record your business process, understand where you're spending your time in specific applications, understand where you've got variance from a process perspective in order to close those gaps so that you can have a streamlined end-to-end -end -end process itself. And then lastly, what we've been working on is how do we then take that analysis that is performed using the tools in order to accelerate building out those automation capabilities. So um, that in a nutshell is, is how we're thinking about that and definitely an area of, of investment for Microsoft. Yeah, we, we like to call that chaos at light speed if you automate a bad process. <laughs> so <laughs> we definitely don't want to do that. We want to make sure that we're being as effective as possible. It looks like we've got some folks from Australia uh, dial are attending here as well from the UK. Good evening. And from Pakistan. Great to see everybody out tonight and today and the morning. So uh, feel free to post your questions as we have here. Uh, Gaston, what was your favorite updates from McKnight? Oh, uh, one of the updates that I've been kind of, uh, you know, looking around this kind of the Power BI hybrid tables. That allow us to get a really perfect performance between you know enterprise systems, and you can you know ha having these kind of playing games between hot and cold data, and define uh, which is going to be refreshed f first, and that, that's that's going to be awesome. So, how do you see this playing into our you know, empowering the organization? Where do you see this really adding value? I think you know the 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 way we you know the Power BI one of one of the big, best goal for us is kind of answering business questions from the business users. So mm -hmm. that being said, uh, one of the pretty common topics every time is performance. Mm -hmm. So with this in mind, what we can do is actually get all the KPIs and questions that's coming from our business and define how we are going to refresh that data coming to our our VA report. So in the in this kind of concept, the hybrid table came to us to kind of the ability to define, okay, 
which part of a specific partitions in my data I'm going to refresh first and right. what is going to go via direct query to your data source. So that for me is going to be awesome. What about you, Trev? What was the, the specific? I'm all about Power BI goals, man. I love this feature <laughs> because when you think about it, it forces you to get to the point. Uh, Power BI has made it so easy to create reports. We're drowning in them. <laughs> We've got more reports so we know where to look. And so goals actually gives you more of that process focus on what is the outcome you're trying to get to. And so some of the things that we're seeing you know, from Kent and team is this ability to not only automate our processes, but to better understand how are they doing as an organization? How do we manage that health? And so overall, we just think that you know it's a great place uh, to start with and then kind of start there and then drill down into the various views that you need. And the, the greatest thing they did with Power, Power BI goals is the fact that you can start manually. You can just simply type in the information, do your status right there, and then drive it out. Now, I know we've, we've got some questions online about where can we get more information about the kind of stuff we're talking about. I think we have a link, uh, an AKAMS link that we can pop up here, and that'll be a good place to go and start uh, to see you know, what we're, we're talking about. Uh, Kent, what was your favorite update? Oh, there's so many. Uh, so, but you know, just to say, yeah, but busy, yeah, yeah, to be uh, respectful of other people and in time, uh, I'll pick one that spans both of the products that I spend a lot of time in. Uh, mm -hmm. So, there's a new feature called proactive messaging that is mm -hmm. found within Power Virtual Agents. Now, what's uh, interesting about this feature is it actually lights up through Power Automate. And so, what does this thing do? So, what we can go ahead and do is there's a, an action inside of the Microsoft Teams connector that allows you to post a message in chat. Now, we've had this ability to post as Flowbot for quite some time, but now what we can actually do is, is post a message directly in a chat with an end user. So let's take, for example, we've got Contoso, and they've got a corporate bot, and as part of the yearly benefits renewal cycle, we need to make sure everyone goes and fills out their benefits re-enrollment form. We can actually track, uh, track the status of that, but how can we proactively reach out to those end users in order for them to go ahead and interact with the bot and ideally complete their benefits re-enrollment? So it could be a schedule. It could be based upon a data event. We'll go ahead. We'll click off, kick off a cloud flow. We'll then be able to post an adaptive card or just a regular message um, into a chat with that user in the context of the, you know, Contoso Enterprise bot itself. And from there, we can, you know, prompt them to go click on, uh, say a form to go fill out the benefits re-enrollment. Uh, we could offer them the opportunity to just uh, have a reminder set or a variety of different sort of scenarios from that perspective. And, and so why I love this um, this new feature is that you know conversational chatbots typically require the user to remember something or to initiate the action. Now we're flipping this upside down and saying, it doesn't always have to be that way. We could actually have other systems or other events that are actually proactive reaching out. And so that's why I'm pretty uh, pretty bullish on that specific feature and uh, really excited about it. I had no idea. And actually, I'm excited because one of the big asks that we're seeing from a lot of customers today is I've got so many things to pay attention to. How do I how do I remember to do this? Remind me. And, and we're seeing a lot of work being done, like with Viva Insights. We're seeing work being done with To Do. We're seeing work, you know, in a number of places. But it's been very difficult to do proactive alerting. And so I'm loving this. This is I, I could see a bunch of places where we can use this today. Um, let's see. We've got some other questions here. Uh, are there more Power Platform events coming from Microsoft? Ignite was too general for me. Chuck, maybe you. Could, I don't know if you've got any insight into that as to what's coming. I do. There's always. I mean, <laughs> And, and you and Gaston actually should know the best because you're the creators of this. So, uh, Karen, what I would really recommend is actually going out and taking a look at the user group in the community. So if you go to uh, community.powerapps.com or community.powerbi.com, there's a great big huge banner for uh, user groups. And there's always user groups happening. Uh, we've got a thousand across the world. Last time I was looking, I believe that's the right number. And mm -hmm. these folks are always creating new events. Uh, as far as specific events, uh, we just finished the LATAM Summit last week. I think Gaston, you were actually helping out with that. So yeah. that was a great event. Coming up is the uh, Power Platform Global uh, Bootcamp. And that's actually in a, an event run in conjunction with the user groups themselves. So check out the user group links. Also getting back to what Kent was talking about, if you did want to actually look at um, 
any of that training for RPA or process mining or app in a day or Power BI and all of it's it's got like 15 advanced training. There's MicrosoftEvents.com and you can go out and find Treb and Gaston actually delivering that content in a city near you. Uh, right now, most of it's done virtually, uh, but they're actually looking to actually pivot that back into a real setting as well. So again, that's MicrosoftEvents.com. You can find lots and lots of them, but please do check out your user groups. These folks on these calls actually spend a lot of time creating these events, and I want to make sure that we know about them. So Treb, how's that? Yeah, that's perfect. And I'll also mention too that what we're seeing is a lot more cross uh, product type uh, conferences. Uh, December is like the first time we're going to actually be back in person at some of these. So we have the big M365 uh, collaboration uh, conference that's going to be in Vegas at the beginning of December. They actually have a power platform track. Uh, they've added that alongside of SharePoint and Viva and Teams and all the other products because very few people are creating these solutions in isolation. You're, and just the stuff Kent mentioned where now hey, you can do stuff in Teams. I mean, that is huge. We want, and so where are you going to go to see that, to see those things come across? And so uh, I'm going to be there actually talking about SharePoint Syntax, which is a way to extract data from like PDFs and stuff easily at scale. And how do you ingest that in Power BI? So, I mean, there's a lot of things that are going to be coming up here. Um, there's some, there, we have a question around, uh, oh, uh, we have Dev Intersection, I believe, too, uh, if we have that was another one. There's so many events. Like everybody's been pent up, going, "Come on, we want to have an event. We we can't do this in person." And uh, it's been a different experience. In fact, what we're finding is that if we're training virtually, we only really can hold somebody's attention for about two hours because after that, you know, life has a way of taking you away. But Dev Intersections coming up. That's another good one. Um, the other question we have that was asked was was Microsoft Loop announced at Ignite, and it was. Um, I think. Let's see. We have a we have a link to a blog post uh, that you can learn about. But essentially, they are uh, they're integrating this into Teams to a certain extent, I believe. And uh, so, again, more to come on this. There's a lot of new technology updates that they're making in that regard, uh, and we're actually uh, seeing a lot of integration. I think with Teams, Teams is really becoming the center of the work world for a lot of people who are working either hybrid or remote. You're either in a meeting, you're doing something related to a specific instance, or you're having to access content related to that context. So you're, if you don't know a lot about Teams, but you're in the Power Platform, I think now is the perfect time to start taking a look at it. It really is the canvas that you wanna be taking a strong look at. Any other comments people have uh, they wanna talk about from uh, Ignite? Other updates that you were in, just enamored by? Because I, I, I did like the hybrid, I have to say. I have, Actually, I haven't heard enough about the Power Apps and the, the, the rest of the Power Platform because Power BI was just overwhelming us with so much stuff. <laughs> so Yeah, coming from my end, uh, Trev, actually one announcement uh, in Ignite that is not so technical, but I feel that so many companies, they were waiting for that, is the Power Apps pay as you go is game changer mm -hmm. is, is, is game changer for the whole power platform world. You know, the way you can enter the low code barrier and access for different companies coming from LATAM, from my end, you know, specifically all the South America's companies, they are going to be kind of amazing, you know, with, the, with this pay as you go as, as the new licensing platform mm -hmm. for our for platform. Our platform. The other topic that I want to bring here, and you mentioned something here, is was the integration between Power Platform. You know, the integration that we know that that is happening right now between Power Automate, Power Apps, Power Virtualizations, Power BI. I've been working with a closely friend of mine, MVP also from Power Hawaii, Alex Rostan, where we uh, been uh, having multiple sessions in different uh, Power Platform user groups, talking about how to integrate Power Virtualizations with Power BI REST API and go into the business layer and use the Power Virtualization to answer questions from the business users around your Power BI tenant. How many licenses you have in Power BI, Power BI Pro license? How many workspace do they have? How many reports do they have? So you interact directly with Power Virtualization embedded in Microsoft Teams, answering questions from your Power BI tenant. Oh. That is a combination that is pretty 
amazing, you know, that we can do in terms of switching and using different power platform uh, uh, frameworks just to kind of answer business questions. Well, and like I said, I, I'm just impressed because, again, they've made it so much easier to use. And we're we're seeing this uh, this massive explosion of interest as people are starting to rethink their processes. Uh, working remotely has really forced us to do that because now we can't depend on just rolling your chair back and saying, hey, how do I do this? You know, it just doesn't scale very well. Uh, so we have four questions that came in. Yes, thank you for posting those. Uh, first up, uh, can you discuss Power Platform? The Power Platform and any connection or overlap to developer portal, previously App Studio, in the realm of Microsoft Teams. Are the Teams app builder tools the same as the Power Platform? I would, I'm going to throw this to, to Ken and, and Chuck, because I think you might be more familiar with this than I am at the moment. Um, I could, I'd say for Power BI, we have the Power BI app now that you use in Teams. But you know, the rest of it, I don't know. Do you, do you guys want to take a stab at that one? Ken, I'll let you go first. <laughs> sure. Uh, so, yeah, I'll be honest. I'm not overly familiar with App Studio, but what I would say from a, a Teams perspective um, and Power Platform, so there's been a lot of investment in this area, and it's it's all good news. And I think what's really interesting about the Power Platform is that you can build these uh, solutions. It could be an app. It could be a chatbot. It could be a flow, a workflow, and automation outside of Teams, and then be able to, say, pin it in many regards or or published from a channel perspective in PVA into Teams. And it's giving you that flexibility of being able to, to leverage both experiences. So when it needs to be in Teams, great. If it doesn't, great. Then I would say layer on top of it, what um, is referred to as Dataverse for Teams, which is just like pure gold in terms of like giving organizations who have bought into the M365 ecosystem the opportunity to build solutions directly in Teams in the context of an environment that is attached to a team itself. And so this is a, a great way for organizations to get started with the Power Platform, still be able to use like good practices around like where do you store your data and having like relational data sources and stuff like that. And so um, while I can't speak specific for the, the prior approach, uh, definitely bullish on sort of the current approach because it gives you a lot of flexibility. And then on top of it, it gives you access to this really large community that is super passionate about building power platform solutions. So uh, I'll hand that back to you, Chuck, but uh, that's kind of the, the way I see it. Yeah, agreeing with what Kent was saying, you know, the developer portal actually has all of these these uh, solutions from Microsoft and the community for you to get started. And one of those is actually the Power Apps uh, creator experience itself. And that actually built, like Kent was saying, built directly into Teams. And there isn't a, going to be an easier way. You know, it's basically file new and you've got an application. Uh, so they're very complimentary and there is an experience right within Teams for doing the creation of th these flows and these Power Apps that you were talking about. Um, also, I want to actually dovetail this back into a previous question, which is, I'm curious to know about which tools are very much essential for any small startups. Well, part of that tools experience, there's three templates right in, right built in for you. So you actually go out and say, hey, I want to actually have a tool that does uh, time away tracking or actually my inventory tracking. Those are already built. So by far and above, I would recommend the sample apps more than likely. I think there are 1300 sample apps in the community. Uh, that link was actually put out there before. So it's probably already created for you. Additionally, um, you can actually find in the community, but also in YouTube, Reza Durrani, a good friend of ours on this on this call, all of us, had actually just created a, an entire tutorial for creating power apps um, based our team based power apps applications, basically from zero to hero in one fell swoop. And he actually has those as videos that you can um, download, you can watch on YouTube and those sample applications are again in that community. So my say, my starting point is take a look at those sample apps, both in teams and outside of it. And those are probably the, the best starting point for a small startup. Find the one that's the domain specific for you, almost certainly it exists, and actually leverage the strength of people before you've actually done a lot of that discovery. So I think that kind of wraps that one up, but there's a bunch more. So Trev, I'm gonna let you actually ask well, the next one. I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna add something to the, the essentials because the two other tools that we use a lot with the Power Platform, Teams is our extranet. So anytime we engage with a client, we set up a Teams in, in instance, we add them as external users, and they we do all the collaboration securely there. 
and from there we can access you know whatever tools that we need. The other thing is Microsoft Forms with Power Automate. So we actually have this on our website for autoresponder uh, type actions. So depending on how you come in, because this is some place that actually startups struggle with is how do I respond to external inquiries very quickly? And with the power of Power Automate, not only can you send an email back to them, but you can also kick off a workflow internally as well as to who needs to, to reach out to this person, what do they need to do? And then how do you track that in your CRM system? It's a wonderful tool. It's a great way to start your funnel. So I'd strongly recommend taking a look at that. All right, so we're gonna go back to the questions here. Uh, is there a workaround on the go to, go to do some basic coding on Visual Studio Code? Mm, again, not my area of expertise here. So somebody wanna try, try to take that one? I, I do very, the only thing I do in uh, Visual Studio Code is basically look at the theme JSON for uh, Power BI. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm up to 8,000 lines now, so we're, we're getting big here. I um, saw I saw actually one one particular use case that uh, I think uh, Ricardo uh, did that with the uh, remote um, return to work um, uh, apps and what he showed was a really great thing about doing power apps and integrate the power apps core with life cycle management so where they open the power apps directly code behind the scenes in the Visual Studio code, and then they compare to have the, the power apps portal in multiple languages. So mm. they compare English and French, and then they deploy and use that strategy as a lifecycle management and doing source control directly from Visual Studio code. I'm not in the power apps, power virtualizations uh, world, more Power BI on data platform, but that amazed me because that is a perfect case to, to do life cycle man management between Power Apps, you know? Yeah, I would actually would be kind of curious for more details on that because, you know, the editor inside of Power Apps is actually based on the Visual Studio Code editor. So hmm. the fact that it, someone's asking, is there workarounds for it? Well, you're kind of using it already. I mean, there are certain places that we do intentionally take you over there. Um, me and Kent have written a lot of custom connectors and that it, that experience is an, an Azure add-in for Visual Studio Code, but that's a very intentional uh, delineation from the app studio that we have in Power Apps itself. So I'd love to get more context on what, what is what is that person asking? Because there are places that we actually say, hey, this is a pro dev experience and Visual Studio Code is the best experience. For those places who are low code citizen developer sort of uh, work frames, we actually take that, you know, like I said, that editor is actually what we use inside of Power Apps. So. Kent, do you have anything you want to add or pretty much covered it? No, I think we're good. Okay. Um, I'm seeing other questions. I think they're, they're being answered on the chat uh, as far as to where they you find information around pricing and whatnot. So uh, I think, you know, basically in my mind, the licensing has just rolled out for power apps and whatnot. And it's always interesting trying to determine what your scale is going to look like, what your consumption is going to look like, because we understand you have budget cycles, you have to plan for the next year. And it's, it's a struggle. Um, I, I think you've got to do the, the homework up front to say, you know, from, from A to B, we're going to put it in pilot. We're going to assume this kind of usage, calculate your costs from there. And then when you go to full rollout, you have to make some assumptions. Now it, we're trying to predict the future. And actually, if we were really good at it, we'd probably be sitting on a beach enjoying our trillions right now, but you know, I'm still sitting here on this video. So I guess, you know, I'm not great at it either. But uh, again, we, we got to do what we can. Um, there's really no right answer there. I think you just, you put in your assumptions, you document them, you talk to finance, give them some heads up and then go from there. And I mean, that's from the kind of stuff that we're doing you know, on the Power BI side, uh, because we get the questions of when do we actually go to premium versus premium per user? You know, And there's a number of, of things that go into that, it really depends on what you're doing. and uh, and. You know, the only thing I would say there is, uh, you know, find an expert, ask them, work with them, and they will help you walk through that process. Um, well, hang on, see. before we move on, because yeah. that's actually a great segue back into why so many people were asking the integration back into Azure subscriptions. Yeah, I have mm -hmm. Azure subscriptions, I want to leverage it, but there's a lot of tools for actually doing forecasting for this is my current run rate, How mm -hmm. can, what is my cost going to be 
at at this rate and then like you said treb if i go out and actually go out and do something like a little bit of load testing what does that look like what does it look like for five ten people so there's a lot of what if calculators based in azure right oh. in the power portal it actually gives you a dotted line and it says this is your current bill and at current run rate this is what you expect um so it's uh, yeah ex exactly there, there's a lot of uh you know capabilities that comes right now in the azure portal with with ai in mind you know that the cost and billing and you can see what are what are the, the usage of any let's say an azure functions and you can do exactly what was you know the the, the billing for the last few months and then it's going to do a forecasting just for you in terms of predicting what it's going to be look like if you still go in under the same context, or you can switch some shears and see, okay, let me give the forecasting if I upgrade the Azure functions by 5,000 users. I, th I, I think that what is coming right now with Power Apps is exactly that. You can start doing your uh, billing uh, process and then doing forecasting based on as just mentioned before, you know, load testing, for example, and you go and do, do a load testing for uh, power apps and see exactly what it's going to be look like your 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 forecasting billing, you know. Well, yeah, and I think you know we've got some links to for you to go to. Uh, hopefully, we can get those posted and uh, and try to help give you some guidance there. Um, we've got about three minutes left here, so I want to make sure we cover everything. I think we have a question around multi-environment apps. And the question, I'm going to shoot that one to Charles. So let's talk about that one. Or Chuck, okay. I should say. I don't know why I said Charles. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm ambivalent. I answer by both. I actually have a lot of friends <laughs> that call me Charles after. It seems so formal, Charles. I, I, maybe they think of me as formal. So anyways, it depends on what you mean by multi-environment. Uh, I am assuming what we're talking about is in the power platform world or the power apps and, and power automate we actually do containers called environments in power in power bi they actually call them workspaces right so there's a delineation and i'm assuming that's what we're talking about is i actually want to go out and have uh, an environment maybe in germany or i have one called test and i actually want to take it to prod or better yet uh, treb works at a uh, a couple different very large companies he wants to develop it inside of one of his environments and take it to their environments and the answer is absolutely matter of fact the power cat team that kent wears on they are the experts in this actually they've actually created an entire set of guidance and documentation on actually how to do we call it the, the, the the continuous integration, continuous deployment pipelines, how you automate that. And it's actually done as part of the build pipeline. So you go out and say, hey, rather than actually pumping this directly into environment A, I want to put it in B, C, and D. Um, so please do look at our application lifecycle management tools, Mark Schwagert, um, Michael Ox, and I'm forgetting, oh, Phil Topness. Those are the people who actually have written that documentation. I'll grab that link and put it in there. But we actually are i have fairly formal best practices from the power cat team um and yes it, it's it's training that i built a matter of fact i'll do a quick plug for me if you go to ak.ms forward slash power apps training there's a 106 page documentation or a document that i wrote with all the screenshots that i worked with mark schweiger and michael ox to actually uh, let you folks know how do you actually do multi-environment development with the power apps and there's actually a couple flows in there, so with Power Automate as well. Kent, okay. did I miss anything? He's oh, got a video. Actually, he he he, pull, he pulled the video out, so perfect. Thank you very much yeah. for that, Kent. So yeah, I think you you nailed it. I think there's a few different sort of maturity opportunities, like scales, in terms of you can manually do this, and then you can make your way up to continuous integration, continuous deployment, and automate end to end as well. But yeah, absolutely on the right path there. Well, uh, so check out these links. There's some great stuff. Uh, we are basically at time. I think we've got like 20 seconds left. So to make sure that, you know, any last words from anybody before we close this out? Because we're down to 15 now. Okay. So with that, I will close it out. So thank you for joining us today. Be sure to leave your, fa your feedback in the chat. Head to the link below to see what's coming up next. And hopefully we'll see you soon at a Microsoft event. Thank you and goodbye. See you. Thank you.